So my name is Jennifer Hernandez Gifford, and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Animal Sciences since 2009. So I've, I've only been here just over two years. The focus of my research is primarily looking at ovarian signaling pathways that regulate steroidogenesis and follicle maturation. So in short, we know, we know that steroid production coming from the ovary is important but we don't know a lot about some of the new signaling pathways that have been identified as, as being players in it. One of those pathways um, that we focus on is called the Wnt signaling pathway. In mammals, there are 19 known Wnt's, and so we're interested in how those Wnt's are involved in development. They, they're really well known to be involved in cancer situations, primarily colon cancer, and also involved, uh, or I should say, misregulation of the Wnt pathways involved in cancer situations and a lot in development. Um, and so in about 1999, a paper came out by Van Yau's group that showed that um, if you knocked out WINT4, which is one of the 19 mammalian WINTs, there was a partial female to male sex reversal. So indicating that WINTs were important in em embryonic ovarian development, or early development of the ovary. So if it's important in the development of the ovary, what's the role? or is there a role for Wnt or the Wnt signaling pathways in the adult ovary? And so that, that's kind of what we're looking at is the role of the Wnt signaling pathways and how those are working together with some of the hormones coming from the pituitary that are known to regulate steroid production and how those two might be converging or, or, or working together. Since I started here, we had um, the opportunity to begin some bovine cell cultures, which I had wanted to do for a long time. So. Uh, we actually have both studies uh, going on in, in the rodent because I have some funding um, that is looking at or for human female fertility. And right now the accepted model for that is, is the rodent. Whether it's the appropriate model or not, uh, it's kind of debatable. And because we don't know that the rodent is the best model, I'm also looking at some of these same things in bovine granulosa cell which is a specific cell coming from the ovary that regulates steroid production. Through my training, um, I've had the opportunity to participate in very applied research projects and then also very basic molecular research projects. And so I've really tried to merge those two backgrounds in my training and be able to answer both questions that affect animal agriculture but also affect human health as well. I don't come from an agriculture background and like many students coming into animal science, the reason I came into animal science is because I thought I wanted to be a veterinarian. Um, I was fortunate enough early on to, um, actually my first job in college was working in an endocrinology lab at New Mexico State and that was my first exposure to the fact that there was something else out there other than um, vet veterinary science if you were in the animal science field. Um, and I actually I fell in love with research. I fell, it, it still allowed me to, to be involved with animals, which I really, really wanted to do, but it gave me a new way to do that. I've been really fortunate. I, um, again, starting out as an undergraduate with Dr. Dennis Halford, I stayed in his lab and, and obtained my master's degree under his direction. And he was one of my first big mentors in animal science. Um, then I went to Washington State and worked with Jerry Reeves. And he, again, has been just a huge influence in my uh, development of research and, and love for animal science and answering those kind of questions. And then I, I switched fields. I, I mentioned in my postdoc, and, and I stayed at Washington State, but I moved over to molecular biology, the School of Molecular Biosciences, and did my postdoc with John Nilsson. And he's really kind of a cutting edge uh, transgenic mouse type of individual, but it works with a lot of, with LH and the, the gonadotropins coming from the pituitary. And he was, uh, he accepted me into his lab as a postdoc without any molecular uh, biology training. And so it was kind of a baptism by fire there. I learned so much from each one of those individuals. And I think as most students, you don't even appreciate how much you, how much they have influenced your uh, path and, and, and your drive or love for a field until, until you're away from it. And, and I actually try and take what I thought were the best parts of their mentoring ability or their mentoring skills and, and combine them in how I train my students. So 
I think animal sciences is going to face in, in, in the future two major challenges. And, and one of those, I believe, is the, the animal rights movement or the animal rights um, emphasis. And I think what we're going to have to do in animal science departments around the world is to, in addition to training students as we're training them now about um, the philosophies that go along with um, basic animal science knowledge, we're going to have to also train them to be able to uh, be vocal about animal agriculture and, and be advocates for animal agriculture. That's going to be a major issue so that we're not run over by, by anti-agriculture groups. And I think a lot of times that, that we're silent because we don't want to get drawn into an emotional um, battle with those individuals and, and as a consequence is their voice is only heard. And I think the, the second major issue um, that animal scientists are going to face it is a funding issue and we're already facing that right now and part of uh, a way to to figure out creatively how you're going to get funded and so I think students now are going to have to realize the importance of gaining some additional skills than um, just the applied techniques that that are so important and we can't lose sight of you're going to also have to be able to gain understand and interpret and, and carry out aspects of the molecular side of it. My advice for anybody going into animal sciences is don't limit yourself. So um, get involved, get involved in labs, get involved in clubs, get involved in farms. There's a price to pay for being anonymous and that price is that you, you may not be exposed to things that are out there that you don't even know you're interested in. So I would say just get involved.